All right, now I'm going to talk a little bit more about Saturn in Pisces and the mundane effects that it's going to create. So this is part three of my Saturn and Pisces videos. So, you know, go ahead and watch the first two if you want to stay caught up on this. But first one, I gave, uh, you know, other, I gave mundane predictions as well and talked about the idea of uh, the old Norse saying, only dead fish go with the flow. Now, uh, second part, I talked, I gave predictions for each of the 12 signs. And then in this third part, I want to talk more about the mundane effects and just give more predictions for what we might see uh, over these, ne these next few years. And this, this transit is going to be going on until 2026. Um, so like I said in the last one, all kinds of difficulties happening around the water element right now. And Saturn is the, the Vata planet and vata creates imbalances so like vata's whole for those of you who know ayurveda vata's whole thing is like you're hungry when you shouldn't be hungry or you're sleepy when you need to be awake or you're wide awake when you need to be going to sleep and all these things are vata problems um because you know vata is the wind element and the wind is just irregular it just blows when it blows it's just kind of spontaneous on the good side but unpredictable and inconsistent and erratic on the bad side. So put that Vata energy in a water element sign and you have all kinds of erratic water element things going on. So that's one simple way you guys can think about this. Ever since Saturn moved into Pisces, I've noticed all kinds of events going on in the news about flooding or just somehow water causing problems. Um, so this uh, one of the main things that I want to talk with you guys about today is water hygiene issues. So this is a really important time to check on water purity, water hygiene, um, testing the the testing the, the the purity of water in your area or in other areas would be a very good idea at this time if you're concerned about that. Um, flooding. Flooding across the board, uh, just over in California, they had these surprise storms that I saw footage on the news of like, of, of, you know, ocean water just breaking over a barrier and, and, and moving a truck and people just running from it as fast as they could. So yeah, flooding is definitely going to be more likely these next few years. And so if you live by the sea like me, you might not, you might want to be aware of that and be attentive to that. Maybe do what you can to uh, you know, reinforce structures that might get damaged by water. This also includes like rot, like in your house, you know what I mean? Or rot issues with wood and, you know, your, or your roof, perhaps needing to get a new roof or things like that. Um, because the, there's going to be, there has been, and there will continue to probably be more unseasonal rains or imbalance of rain. So like, n here in Charleston, very, very little rain. And then when we got rains, it was a crazy amount. Uh, just back in December, around December 17th or 14th or sometime around that, uh, we had this surprising storm come through Charleston that was so bad, it actually caused an elderly woman to drown in her car because she got flooded. Charleston is at sea level and I guess it got flooded and she couldn't get out of her car in time and she drowned in her car. How horrible is that? I looked, I mean, and, and I had already looked because I was like, this is a crazy storm. It was literally flooding up into my driveway. And I looked at the chart and the moon was in Shatabishak in Pisces with Saturn. So you see the moon is also the water element. It's also Vata quality to it. Um, it being in Shatabishak, the nakshatra of Varuna, the sea, the watery nakshatra, and in Pisces, with that Saturn creating imbalances in the Vata element, you add all that up and that's a recipe for a crazy flood. Um, so, you know, you might want to watch out for when that moon and Saturn are with Pisces if, you know, you're concerned about water and flooding in, in the context of your life, right? Um, so, watching out for these things like hail um, as well, you know, any kind of damage that can come from water, especially cold water, because Saturn is that cold quality. Um, and then, you know, 
across the board, just Saturn is dirty stuff like toxins. So dirty water is very possible during these times. You see what I'm saying? So you need to be more careful about that. Um, it's more likely to be poisoned through water. You see what I'm saying during this time than another time. Um, all other things being equal. On the positive side, there may be, and may have already been, or there may be a lot of scientific breakthroughs about our past and our culture, our society, our history, dealing with underwater or sunken sites. So if any of you guys are into archaeology, I would, if, or if an archaeologist was coming to me, I would suggest searching and hunting for, you know, underground structures or underground things, you know, like uh, Yamakoti, that famous place off the coast. No, sorry, Yamakoti is the the ancient prime meridian that the ancient Vedic books like Surya Siddhanta give where you're supposed to calculate things from. And it is a point off the coast of Japan. It is just an island there. And that is where you're supposed to calculate all kinds of important things from in Vedic astrology. And that place, there's no place there now, which shows you how ancient Vedic astrology is. And that would be a fun thing to, to study or to search for at this time, you know, to maybe search that area where those coordinates were. Archaeology is a, an amazing field that I would strongly encourage a lot of young people to get into now because it's like that older generation that was held back by that Judeo-Christian worldview, the world, the earth is only 3,000 years old or something like this. They've all kind of been retiring and dying off and there's this younger generation that isn't held back by those uh, concepts. And, you know, we're living in a world with Gobekli Tepe and just like all these things that have come out and proven that we are much more of an ancient culture than we thought and there's astrology interwoven into all these structures and all these things so i definitely advocate you know just getting into that field if you're looking for a field to go into but um yeah keep an eye out for possible breakthroughs dealing with like sunken civilizations or underwater like things that have been kind of flooded over or covered up by water those sorts of things um undersea explorations but Yamaguni, that's the name of the one, not Yamakoti. So Yamaguni is this monument off the coast of Japan. You could look that up if you're curious. But it's an obvious ancient structure. Um, and, you know, there's just so much more work to be done in that field. Some of you may know about Dwarka. Uh, Dwarka was considered to be mythology, you know, and then they found it in the 80s uh, off the coast of India. Uh, Troy was the same case, you know. Atlantis, Lemuria, these things are gonna are always considered to be myth, and then one day we're just gonna probably find it. You know what I mean? Um, or we may have already done that. Uh, so possible um, possible discoveries there, and then um, when Mars joins Pisces coming up later on this year, there could be much more accidents and tragic events around water so that's more of a time to really be careful um another interesting thing that i'm expecting is uh you see because i was saying how cold water is kind of cause more going to cause more danger and then i talked about the spiritual narcissism thing so i was uh in the last video you know how there's going to be so many more um people kind of trying to like push spirituality or you know convey themselves with their ego as being very spiritual or do that spiritual narcissist thing. And, uh, you know, a lot of like really just broken Westerners are going to be going to places like Bali, you know, and like trying to trick like anyone they can into taking their wet workshops, you know, and take their, do their DMT ayahuasca experience and let them enlighten you and doing everything they can to avoid working on their own life and just projecting it onto everyone else. Let me fix everybody else. These are common things I'm sure you guys have seen even before Saturn was in Pisces and they're going to get, they've gotten worse and they're going to get much worse. Um, and there will probably be things in the news that come out. I can imagine it now, like so-and-so, you know, did this retreat and got, uh, died from some dangerous, uh, you know, shamanic ritual, and then like it's gonna, the media is gonna take that as a way to say all those things are bad when really it's just they're picking the lowest hanging fruit and they're ignoring all the 
awesome wellness practitioners that are, you know, just not being really loud and seeking so much attention. I want to say that too, actually, now that I have a moment to say it. Uh, one of my favorite teachers said that to me recently in the last year. He was like, yeah, it really kind of sucks these days how whoever gets the most attention just makes gets the most readings or gets the most money or the most views. It's just unfortunate that the younger generation actually believes they can just get sacred wisdom from TikTok and Instagram and YouTube all day long. Ugh, like, come on. Like, that is so gross. All the best astrology info is not on YouTube. It's in paid courses like my astrology course or all the courses I took for 15 years. You know what I mean? I was not watching YouTube videos for 15 years, you guys. I was studying and I was enrolled in structured courses. And I suggest the same for y'all unless you just can't afford it. Um, and I made a ton of sacrifices and was very broke and poor to be able to afford that for all those years. Um, but yeah, you don't want to fall for that like see Saturn can be so like he's that suger he's lazy so he can make you want to just take shortcuts and in Pisces in the spiritual world you're going to see a lot of people wanting to take spiritual shortcuts you see and that's going to turn into spiritual escapism rather than spiritual growth so just do your best you guys to deal with that and resist that and not encourage that too much in others um you know and so this is like this leads me to like the ice bath thing you know, because like, I don't want to be critical to any of you guys who love ice baths because cold water is super good for you. I am a surfer. I love cold water. You get in the wetsuit. Um, cold water has, there's a lot of therapeutic benefits to cold water, but now's not the time that those benefits are going to be felt as much over these next few years. And they might even be bad for people's health, for a lot of people's health who have Vata issues and don't need to get those exaggerated. And taking ice baths will only exacerbate some of those Vata issues. And when I was in Goa, I met like this one, you know, pseudo fake enlightened guy, you know, and uh, he, um, he was just like, basically one of those people who had just recently had a spiritual awakening in the last year probably just a drug experience that he mistook for a pseudo spiritual awakening or maybe a genuine i don't know but he you know like i said in the last video with psychedelics and those experiences if you need that that's totally fine and normal but when you get the message you hang up the phone and then you go and apply that message and that's kind of the problem with a lot of that hippie psychedelic spiritual narcissist Bali psy trance world that they all want to uh you know like this guy he wanted to sell and push his breathwork workshops and his ice baths and just push so hard on people and just push these really exaggerated like extreme breathwork <laughs> all that stuff that is so bad for you from the yoga perspective like to to work yourself up like that um no that is not how kriya yoga works that is not how authentic yoga and pranayama works Notice how often, this is another interesting point. Sorry, I'm getting a little worked up here because there's a lot of stuff I could say about this field, honestly. But there's another interesting point. Notice how often people are using the term breath work nowadays instead of pranayama because they're not actually qualified to teach you pranayama. They're not actually qualified to teach you pranayama. So breath work because there's no meaning to that word. It was recently made up. And you don't have to be qualified or anything or have a guru to teach breath work, especially if you just call it shamanic breath work. <laughs> it's like you get a free pass to see just to do whatever you want and to charge hundreds of dollars. <sighs> so this is the kind of thing that I'm talking about that you need to really be careful of and watch out. Yeah, I mean, it's actually not just one person, but just like a lot of people that I've met over the years, just to be clear, that have been like, trying to promote a lot of drugs and just thinking like, you know, doing more psychedelics is the answer when they've already done them and they don't seem like they're doing anything new but wanting to just do more of them and, uh, you know, these sort of things. And, you know, a lot of them are life coaches, strangely enough. Like, it's kind of a joke now. I was watching a movie on Hulu. I didn't even finish it, but the whole point was like, this really broken woman who is like a complete mess and everyone hates her. And then she gives someone some encouragement and she's like, yeah, it lifts her up. She's like, now I'm going to be a life coach. And it's like that. Yes, that's, I'm not against being a life coach, but it's like, 
uh, it's a lot easier to try to heal others than to try to heal yourself. You know what I mean? So just notice that. And you don't want to fall for someone who's a life coach that really needs to life coach themselves and is really just avoiding that. And of course, in astrology, you could also be a broken person just trying to project and fix others. But if you, you actually have to learn the skill of astrology first, because you, you're not just giving blind encouragement, they're expecting you to show and demonstrate knowledge and skill. So as you learn those skills, you will learn about your own self and you will you won't be able to help but learn more and you will psychologically heal yourself just by learning about yourself. So someone who studies astrology and then gives counsel right away is going to give so much better counsel than someone who just gives blind encouragement as a life coach, um, which is still good again, but it's not like they've really developed any skills or worked or it's not like they have truly worked on themselves. Whereas to go through and like learn all this astrology and really test it out, you end up getting that, that eye of wisdom, the eye of the Veda. You end up healing yourself and seeing yourself and others differently. So even um, though astrologers do need to work on their spiritual lives and practice meditation and you know work on their psychology and heal themselves too, Vedic astrology provides a course for that. That's like it's already built into that. Whereas just being a life, an American style life coach doesn't, May, doesn't really ensure that you as a coach are healing in any way whatsoever. I hope that that's clear. Oh. Okay. You know, these are just the things that we need to watch out for with this time. And uh, just need to keep that in mind. You know, like psychedelics, again, like there's a way to see ex and experience the divine in nature. And that's beautiful. And that's amazing. And that's K2 in Libra. Right now we have K2 in Libra. So there are a lot of wonderful opportunities to experience the divine, the spiritual side of life in nature, in love, in a person, in pleasure, in an experience. So there is that, but then there's the other side of this time where Saturn and Pisces is putting like kind of limits on how much we can just escape into pleasure and is wanting us to grow spiritually into more mature people. So, I mean, yeah, we just need to watch out for these these sort of spiritual shortcuts. And yeah, there's just a lot of people out there that I've met since last March when Saturn entered Pisces that have been, you know, they maybe had an awakening or something, but they're just maybe still approaching spirituality in very childish ways. And they're trying and they're kind of seduced by their own experience and their own karma. And this is where astrology is so valuable is to help you realize where you're being seduced by your own karma and you think that everyone is going to need the same experience as you and astrology says the opposite it's not that it's not that way for us and so if you're like you know like this guy that i knew in goa awesome guy but just obsessed with the ice bath everybody's got to do the ice bath just because that worked for you doesn't mean it's going to work for everyone you know and it's like when you get you get too excited about your thing or that thing you don't you can't see everybody else and their value and what all they're able to provide. And uh, yeah, so it's just one of these things that we have to really be careful and um, just pay more attention to those things. Who's really authentically offering a service and who's just kind of like uh, sort of just you know maybe not hasn't put in as much time and is not as mature in the spiritual field and is just starting but doesn't want to admit that to themselves and so wants to play that teacher role or something rather than put the time in and do the work like saturn wants us to do and so ice baths are very good for you i'm not saying that they're not but now is a time when i bet that they will decrease in popularity and uh that would make sense the other thing is that pisces rules uh, like vacations and retreats and ashrams and being free from material concern. So I recently read about a cruise ship um, right off the coast of where I live in Charleston and a uh, someone fell overboard. You know, a, a passenger fell overboard off a cruise ship. That's so rare. So you see, once again, this death, sorrow, tragic, horrible thing happening around water and they weren't able to find them. Um, so 
that kind of ties in also with this like yoga retreats, Bali, this kind of like bliss bunny type of Pisces thing. There's going to be a lot more sobering, scary, fearful events happening in those fields. Um, and that's again why it's just you need to be more careful there and not just take some random guys like workshop. Just come off with me to this waterfall and we're going to do some sort of crazy ceremony and get into this icy waterfall he's never gotten into. And then he like breaks his arm and cuts himself or gets hurt or something. It's just, yeah, um, just something to keep in mind. Um, and... Yeah, Mars will join Pisces. That will be the time when I would expect the most of these dangerous, tragic events around water. And that's coming up in a month or two. I forget you can look into that specifically online. Um, and yeah, just important even on the health level to watch out for like cold and watery foods. If you have a Vata quality or if Vata and Kapha is getting aggravated already, you may need to watch out for foods that could aggravate aggravate that like ice cream or like cold watery um foods and then getting the getting your ph tested of your inner water and your 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 ocean your inner ocean and then checking the ph level of any water bodies that you rely on or are near like the lake this and that we had a tremendous amount of toxins dumped into our uh, see during that crazy rainstorm that I mentioned earlier. Um, and so, yeah, just watching out for that, watching out for, um, uh, you know what I mean? Or if you're driving over a watery, cold, icy bridge and there's snow on the ground, make sure you're buckled up at least or something, you know, just add, add an extra amount of caution there just for good merit, for good karma, for the future, if nothing more. And, um, you know, it doesn't mean you shouldn't be near like vacations or tropical islands. I love places like that. I hope to be in places like that. But I'll just be a little bit more cautious. You know what I mean? When certain things maybe seem too good to be true or things like that. Um, and just be mindful of these fake spiritual shamans, you know. And that's the other thing a client even mentioned this to me recently is like, how is everyone all of a sudden an astrologer or a life coach or a reader? It's like, where were all of you guys, you know? And that's a really good point to make is like, well, before you go and get a reading, before you go and get a life coaching, which life coaching, what really is that? Like astro we astrologers are able to do that and then predict events and then heal your psychology and not spend a year just talking to you, trying to figure out your issues. We can just look at it in an hour of looking at your chart and know those issues. But to each their own, it's not, astrology is not for everyone. But, uh, you know, so yeah, like doing uh, these life, a lot of these life coaches are charging like thousands and thousands of dollars to just basically just encourage you and give you just generic encouragement. And encouragement is great, don't get me wrong, but you get that from an astrologer too, and you don't get like this blind self, self affirmation. You get actual self acceptance where you do see your strengths and your weaknesses and where you want to work on, which is a lot better for you than getting blind self-affirmation as they call it in psychology which only increases your ego for example i want to make this crystal clear here because a lot of people this is another aspect of this saturn and pisces this instagram this fake false self-love type of thing that's only in increasing our ego you have to understand that in psychology particularly in adlerian psychology they go into this very much so that self-affirmation is different from self-acceptance Say I wanted to pass a test and I needed 100% and I only got 60%. If I say, this is not true of me, I'm 100% and I am just not 60%, I am 100%. This is what is true of me and I'm going to make, make that. That's like self-affirmation, just saying I am the best. What if I'm actually not though? What if I actually do have flaws and I might want to address them and but I might need to address them before they improve? That approach doesn't allow for that. Self-acceptance, much better, it allows for you to say, okay, I got a 60 and I wanted 100. I can accept 60 with where I'm at now, and these are the issues that I want to address, and this is what I want to work on to eventually reach that 100. That's a, that's a healthy approach. And that will not exaggerate and inflate a false sense of self-importance and perfection, and that will help you work through your issues. No one's really at 100, but that approach helps you get there Whereas the other approach will actually ensure that you never get there. So again, 
most people that are claiming to be life coaches have probably never studied Adlerian psychology or any of these things, you know what I mean? And, and then there's so many other people who have gone and worked on and done and put in the time to do all these things. So you want to go to them. So before you go to a counselor, kind of just look them up or ask or like see how long they've been doing it, you know? How many years have they had this YouTube channel or their website? How far back does it go? That's one good thing you can do to just to do your due diligence and to check, you know? So anyways, um, there's a lot of other topics. You guys feel free to uh, share your feedback, your thoughts on this in the comments. If you have anything else for me that you'd like for me to address on this. And I don't want to seem like I'm negative here, but that's Saturn requires like a sense of healthy... Uh, uh, as the spiritual master Mayor Baba said once, there does need to be a healthy negative element in your spiritual life. You know what I mean? You can't just say yes to everything, you know? So let's end it on that. Okay, thanks you guys. And uh, yeah, um, feel free to leave a comment or ask me if you have any questions about this. Thanks.